So when we're talking about Windows created laptops, then this here is probably the fanciest one out there. This is the ASUS ProArt StudioBook 16, and this is the latest 2023 model. Let's take a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now the box is quite big as well. So uh, let's open it until inside, as you can see. Okay, there's a few boxes inside. So let's see, what did we get? First of all, ProArt backpack. That's right, quite nice texture. Okay, so it's like a bag and a backpack. Like a back pocket here where you can put some things. So you've got this massive bit on the top there if you wanna fill it all up and you know have it filled with some stuff. You can do it as well, make it into a big bag or you can make it small like it was before, slide in there. And then you've got this nice pro art buckle here that will hold it tight. But then this is the inside of the bag. On the back of it, that's probably where you're gonna put the laptop. Then you've got middle compartment, something on the side here as well. Oh, so you can have side access to the bag as well. So if you don't want these straps, you can undo them from the pocket there and then just literally put them in this compartment here. And then now you just have a bag without any shoulder straps, but you can make it into a shoulder strap bag as well. Pretty cool. Here's the laptop. We'll open that in a minute. Let's take a look at this. So we've got the power brick and it is 240 watts. Oh, and it does come with Asus Pen 2.0 as well. Obviously this is the US plug that comes with it, but it's a normal kettle lid that goes on the back of this. And looks like I've already got one of these, so they haven't changed the power brick much. Tiny USB-C cable for charging. And then here we have the pen. And there's a few different tips. There's B, H, B, and H. And that's the tip changer here. The way you change it, you just put it in and then slide it in that side and then pull it out and then you can put the next one in. And then in the back of the pen, there's a little button there. And then if we slide this one open, here in the back, we have USB-C charging. There's two buttons on the pen here as well. And then finally, this laptop. Here's the laptop. pro packaging. There's like the corner measurements in degrees. Then we've got a little measurement ruler here on that side and that side as well. That's the literature for Asus OLED. And then there's also antibacterial guards. It has 99% bacterial inhibi inhibition. At least three years of lasting protection. So, cures COVID as well. Alrighty then. Here it is. So this is nice and soft. I might get my fingerprints out with this. Interestingly, there's a bit of an overlap that goes over the back of the screen. So it extends slightly over, as you can see here. Let's open this up. That's amazing. Pro Art Studio Book in gold over there. We've got an actual dial. Now uh, this is a physical dial now on here. And then the trackpad here. There is a little bit of a numpad on this side as well. Harman and Carden sound inside. This is quite a big screen here and feels very, very solid. I mean, there's literally no screen flex. Like I am not able to flex this screen at all. This feels extremely, extremely solid. Hinges and this, it feels like, yeah, you've, you've bought a real nice laptop. Let's take a look what's changed because what I have over here is the Pro Art Studio Book from 2000 and I don't know whenever, but this is the 11th gen. So there was a 12th gen in between, and then now this is 13th gen. So if we are looking at the kind of finish, then the finished material is exactly the same. Pro Art looks very much similar here, 
but I think the laptop has actually gone bigger. Yeah, slightly bigger. As you can see, if I put it over the bottom, the newer studio book is a little bit bigger. It's gone thicker as well. I'm not sure if you can see this, but the new studio book is much thicker than the old studio book. But bear in mind, this one only had 11900H, which has eight cores, 16 threads. This one has 13900HX, which has 24 cores, and 32 threads and RTX 4070 compared to the RTX 3060 which we have on this side. Now because the laptop has gone a little bit thicker let's take a look inside. On the right here we have the new and then the old. It is slightly slightly thicker there. So looking at the port we've got 10 gigabit USB type A headphone and mic combo jack, SD card reader, fan grill, on the right side or left side. Interesting they have moved the SD card reader to the left side on the older one, it's on the right side. This is on the left side. Now here from this angle, you can see how the newer one is actually longer than the older one. On the back of the laptops, now the older one had no ports, but the newer one has two grills, two grills. We've got an RSA45 LAN port here. We've got a HDMI port in the LAN and the DC is in the lap back as well, which is very good. Much better location than on the side. But interestingly, from this angle, you can see that the older laptop is actually a little bit longer or wider, as you can see, than the newer one. So here the new one has Kensington lock on this end, fan grill, which is a little bit longer, type A port, 10 gigabits, and then two Thunderbolt ports. So in terms of ports, we're exactly the same. And if we're looking at the insides of the laptops, then what has changed? We don't have speakers or the grill on the top there anymore. The keyboard has been moved slightly higher, I believe. Now, if you put them level on the bottom there, you can see that the keyboard has moved slightly higher. The Asus style is exactly the same. What has changed is now the new trackpad has a similar finish on the trackpad as the chassis and doesn't have physical three buttons anymore. The keyboard looks very, very similar to me, but they've, as you can see, they have managed to keep the laptop kind of a little bit more skinnier and there's less bezels on the screen. The new Studio Pro Book has, oh my word, how many different size screws does it have? It has three separate sizes of screws. So these screws here in the middle, in the middle back and in the middle sides are one size and they are the longest size. Then these in the corner are slightly shorter and then all of these in the front are even shorter screws. Okay, we have the old and the new and looks like the new has a bit more air pass through than the older one. As you can see, older one has a little bit less than the newer one. So when we're looking at the layout, the older one had six heat pipes, but the middle one here is like a two short ones, where here we have a one massive one in the middle in here, as you can see. Uh, altogether, there's one, two, three, four, five altogether. Here we have the chipset, we have two fans. Now they could have extended the radiator a bit more, but look at the fin density on the older one versus the newer one. The newer one is much more dense than the older one. Looks like the fans could be the same fans, but don't quote me on that. They are coming in and blowing out from there. Is that a vapor chamber? Both of the laptops actually have sodium slots. The old one is DDR4, the new one is DDR5, but I think mine is a 32 gigabyte model, which means that I believe this should be a 32 gig dim here. It's got a little bit of a heat sink over it. I guess we'll turn the laptop on and then we'll see in there, but add a secondary dim slot there and then you get double the performance. Obviously right now you only have kind of single channel performance because uh, there is only one slot occupied. It would be ideal to have secondary there as well. You'll get more performance, but the good news is they're not occupying both of them, but you can easily upgrade it very, very cheap. There is two M.2 slots in here. One on this side. Let's take a look what M.2 is this over there. This is a Micron one, Samsung one. Yeah, it's a Samsung one. So a 980 Pro, most likely. I doubt this is going to be 990 Pro. This is a one gigabyte model there and a little thermal pad on. But interestingly, they haven't cut the thermal pad for the whole section. There's another chip in here that hasn't got any thermal pads on. 
and then there's another M.2 slot that you can add in there. Both of the batteries are 90 watt batteries. Looks like the batteries are exactly the same. So they've saved on production costs in making a new one. The speakers are on a slightly different angle on the new one. There and there is a speaker. Here we see the ASUS dial, which looks to be exactly the same as well. Now, interestingly, as I'm screwing this back there, pretty soon you might be able to upgrade this new studio book to 96 gigabytes if you wanted to, if you need a bit more RAM than this, which is a lot more than you can get on a MacBook. Since we do have DDR5, that can be up to 48 gigabytes per DIMM. Now, DDR5 can go up to 64 gigabytes per DIMM as well, but uh, that's not out yet. This new studio book can have up to RTX 4070 and I believe Asus has made a little bit of a mistake here. Now this is their high-end creator laptop, right? You can get this laptop as well with the RTX 4000 ADA GPU as well, but then the CPU will be the 13900 an 80HX. But why I think ASUS should have gone with an RTX 4080 um, laptop in here, up to 4080, is because the 4080 has dual encoders. The 4070 has only single encoder, but dual encoding would have been absolutely something that they should have had in this laptop because this is the highest end model. Like you can get the ZenBook Pro 14, which we've done the video in there, which is much smaller, but this one also has an RTX 4070 in there. So the encoder performance is actually exactly the same as on the 16 inch model. Let's turn the laptop on. Now, because this is not the 13900HX, but 13900 80 HX that means that this boosts up to 5.6 gigahertz than 5.4 you get a little bit more extra there and if you're photo video editing for creators the single core performance at uh, that is very very important actually the fans work that they pull the air underneath and exhaust it from both sides back and front okay one of the things that i can see asus advertise on the website about this laptop is that it's got 180 degree flat hinge design which means that this hinge should be going 180 degrees so if i'm going to take the laptop here if i'm going to start to push this down it does go down but this is not 180 degrees as you can see this is definitely not flat if i'm laying it maybe from the top can you see it should be straight but there are some very interesting good designs as well now once you have the asus pen i've literally just turned it on this just works okay you just turn it on and then you can already use it here as you can see but the interesting thing is can you see me use this now this trackpad is 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is the same as the screen. Both the screen and the touchpad, they're, they're both, you know, touchscreen. I can use um, the pen or my fingers to actually use this. So, But because the trackpad and the screen are exactly the same aspect ratio, it works one-on-one -on -one what happens on the screen. So if, you, if I go to that corner and then all the way to that corner, it will reflect it on the screen there. And the interesting thing is you don't have to slide your pen on the trackpad to actually hover around. You can just go in the like in the corner there and you know that this is going to be the X there. I can go in there. I'm, look, I'm not on it and I'll just click down there. Doesn't matter where the cursor is. Look, I can make the cursor go in there. But then now I go on the bottom and then boom. I didn't even slide the cursor because if you go it with your finger, um, you'd have to take hold of this cursor and then pull it where you want to click. But now with the pen, obviously you just go, okay, I'm here click that makes sense which is pretty pretty cool and if you're doing some kind of uh, drawing or photoshop you know maybe making the edges right so painting something out then you can use the touch screen in here which works exactly the same now you could use the laptop like upside down like that to do some drawing on your photoshop but you'll have to manually adjust the screen to go upside down unfortunately it doesn't um, automatically kind of rotate because of the gyroscope inside. So we do have 32 gigs of memory already installed. Uh, interestingly, for some reason, the laptop here says one out of four slots occupied, even though there's two slots, dim slots in there. The speed is 5200 mega transfers, not 48. So now with the 13th gen, you actually get faster RAM speed as well, which is new actually. And look at that, there's studio drivers installed not game ready drivers. It says that there is a new studio driver installed uh, available with the GeForce experience. Now, 
GeForce Experience is a kind of a love and hate relationship. I, because I know how to update the drivers, I don't like to have it running in the background, just takes extra resources. But for someone who just wants things to work and keep them updated, it's nice to have already installed and tell you, look, there's a new driver, update this and update that. Now, when you buy secondary sodium, 32 gigs of memory, you can just put it in there and then boom, you've got 64 gigabytes and you're not wasting any of the already included or installed RAM. The trackpad feels very, 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 very nice. Now I've used the Asus um, ZenBook Pro 14 OLED here and this feels a little bit different. The click on it is much um, longer distance in terms of the click, but here it's very, very shallow just a nice little feedback when you're gliding around the trackpad. It's much quieter as well on the 16 inch, feels like a bit more premium. We've got the same feedback on the top of the trackpad as on the bottom, okay? It kind of pushes down exactly the same on all corners, where on the 14 x this is ZenBook now, this is not Pro Art, obviously, it's a little bit lower down in terms of the Asus lineup. This ZenBook has no feedback on the top of the trackpad. It doesn't like click down, whereas on the bottom, it does click down. So it's kind of on an angle where you can click it only one way on the bottom there on the corners. And it does go down quite a bit, but it doesn't go down at all from the top. This feels very nice premium. Does anyone know what's the most search thing on Bing search? Google or download Google Chrome. Is that funny? Okay, I've got Cinebench installed and um, Hardware Info 64 as well. I just want to see the 24 cores and 33 threads on the laptop going. So let's take a look. What we're pulling, 115 watts. 158 watts pulled right now. Thermal throttling now, but it was waiting for it to thermal throttle. It didn't kick the fans up there. Now goes down to 143 watts. Okay, what type of score did we get? 29! thousand points in multi-core that is more than the desktop 12900k on a laptop that's absolutely ridiculous and it pulls less wattage as well that's crazy crazy high score okay let me do it one more time i just want to see this actually work 160 watts 155 watts look it's not thermal throttling it waits for the CPU to hit that 90 degrees, thermal throttles it, and then puts the fans in, which means it favors quietness over the performance. But still, the core temperature is only 88 degrees. Now, once the fans kick in, it does go down. Almost 30,000 points. 29,000 points. That right there is higher than the 13700 desktop CPU desktop CPU that pulls 240 watts. That's absolutely ridiculous performance on a laptop. Can you believe that you can get this on a laptop? Okay, in comparison, the Mac Studio M1 Ultra, right? That's a 20 core CPU, right? Gets only 24,000 points. So this is 20% better than the Mac Studio M1 Ultra on a laptop. in and out.